Well, it's the eve of Christmas Eve, and I thought, hey, how about we learn some stuff before the holidays truly come? Wouldn't that just be exciting? Probably not, but who cares? It's fun facts with Discord. Here we go. The reason banana candy doesn't taste like bananas is because it resembles a banana that went extinct many, many years ago. But that is just to be a myth. The real reason is because they know how to make artificial flavors and put it in banana-flavored candy. That means somebody had to have tasted this ancient banana if they wanted that one to work. I don't even know how you figure that one out. But more importantly, why not just make it regular banana-flavored? I think the bananas we have today are pretty dang delicious. Just make that flavor! Contrary to popular belief, chameleons don't change color for camouflaging themselves. It's usually to indicate emotion or temperature. And a chameleon's eyes only have one lid that wraps all the way around. That's creepy, but cute, because chameleons are adorable. In the Great Depression, hobos used signs written on walls or sidewalk to communicate with other hobos about good places to sleep, people who live in certain houses, etc. And hey, here's a diagram of all of them. I think I've actually seen some of these before. I still think they use it, or at least when I was in New York City, I think they still use it. Blazing Saddles was an influential comedy that had a lot of consequences in modern-day filmmaking. But funnily enough, or rather not so funnily enough, the major use of the derogatory term in the film was not what made people angry. It was rather a famous scene in the film. This scene in particular. And if you don't want to punch in the gif code, it is the scene where Mongol punched the horse to the ground. The horse was trained to fall on cue, act hurt, among other things. But the statement no animals were harmed in the making of this film had yet to be coined, so many, many people wrote in asking if the horse is okay. That is a very well-trained horse. It knows how to fall when being punched. Maybe it's Bojack's ancestor, I don't know. Sometime after The Phantom of the Opera was released in 2004, a whole new original song composed by Andrew Lloyd Webber would begin to circulate on the internet, which has given new appreciation to the movie. Sadly, it was cut before the final release. However, the deleted scene can be viewed on YouTube right here. Look at that Z going music. Advertising other videos within my videos, aren't you just a clever little man right there? The first recorded autonomous sensory meridian response ASMR, was a forum post on SteadyHealth.com back in 2007 called Weird Sensation Feels Good. Soon afterwards, Jennifer Allen founded the Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response Group on Facebook, and people began making ASMR content in an attempt to trigger the stimuli, and the rest is history. Look at go and go. He's got all these facts. They're just good. Okay. Making the animated special for How the Grinch Stole Christmas wasn't Seuss's idea at all. It was the idea of Looney Tunes director Chuck Jones. The only reason Seuss was so hesitant on making it, it was because of his less than stellar filmmaking experience with his movie called The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T. That sounds scandalous. About five years ago, IBM made a short animation called A Boy in His Atom. The entire thing was made by moving atoms frame by frame, and it was described as the smallest movie ever made. Pun fully intended. The YouTube, ugh, the YouTube Rewind 2018 is one, if not the most disliked video on YouTube. Currently, it has 13 million dislikes. The more insane part of this is, is that the video itself has only been up for two weeks. And it beat up Justin Bieber's baby, which has been on YouTube for years. The reason why our body temperature is 98.6 Fahrenheit, 37 degrees Celsius for you people who aren't American, is because it's warm enough to prevent fungal infection and cold enough that we eat nonstop to maintain our metabolism. Oh, so that's why we eat nonstop? Oh, well, okay then, I'll take it. Good excuse. And finally, Punch-Out's creative team was also the same team that worked on the Nintendo 64, the GameCube, and the Wii. The last game the team made for Nintendo was Pilot Wing 64. When a new team wanted to make Punch-Out for the Wii, they had to ask permission for the character's uses. Little Mac's size in the original Punch-Out wasn't because of storyline, but due to hardware restraints. The Nintendo Entertainment System is not as strong as an arcade cabinet, meaning they couldn't do the wire model that was the same size of the fighters, as it would have stressed and crashed the system. And little did you know, because of that restraint, we now have this iconic small little boxer from New York, who, for some reason, everybody ships with Samus and Smash. 
Okay. Well, Merry Christmas Eve. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.